Hi, today's problem is a tall tetraploid P plant genotype capital T capital T small t small t is crossed to a short tetraploid plant. All four alleles would be small t, assuming that tall capital T is dominant and that it is only takes one copy of the dominant allele to give a dominant phenotype. What ratio of the progeny phenotypes do you expect for this cross? And as usual, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own first, and when you would be ready, you can run video again, and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. And uh, probably from the first glance, uh, this problem might uh, look like uh, difficult, because here we have tetraploid plant, and we uh, used to diploid organisms uh, when we have two sets of the chromosomes one from the uh, mother side another from the father side and uh, in the plant kingdom we have a lot of uh, other examples when plants can be uh, polyploid uh, for example triploid and uh, sometimes triploidy induced by uh, people uh, like, for example, many strains of banana are triploid, so you cannot find seeds inside bananas. And, of course, watermelons are triploid, some apples and pears. So, there are also other ploidy level exist, like tetraploid, four sets of uh, chromosomes, and uh, pentaploid, hexaploid, and even octaploid. For example... Many crops are naturally polyploid, and uh, this happens naturally. And people just seeing that some of the plants has uh, bigger fruits or seeds would choose such plants in order to use the seeds to produce more this kind of plants. So. This would be artificial selection. So that's why after about 10,000 years of artificial selection, now we have many crops that is polyploid. And uh, this is an uh, example that we have today. Uh, is about tetraploid plants. So this plant has four full sets of chromosomes. So if uh, I would draw a picture, um, diploid uh, organism would look like this. So for example we have uh, four uh, chromosomes and four of them would be uh, from the mother side and four of them would be from the father side. For example we humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes so the total number of chromosomes would be 46, 23 of them would be from the mother side and 23 from the father side. But uh, also some plants, uh, as I told earlier, might have uh, four sets, uh, four full sets of chromosomes. So the uh, genome would look like this. And sometimes... Uh, it would be not just um, four different colors that I might uh, use here. Usually it look like this. Um, one set is duplicated and another set is also duplicated. And it's not like, uh, for example, this one, when we have uh, one set of chromosome then uh, another set of chromosome and uh, then one more set of chromosome and the fourth. So usually you cannot find such situation like this and where we have four different sets of chromosomes. Usually uh, with tetraploids we find situation like this on this picture 
And this happens just because uh, there was spontaneous uh, duplication of uh, chromosome set, for example, due to non disjunction uh, during meiosis. So uh, we have two sets of chromosomes uh, that were, for example, here initially from the father side. So we have here duplication, and one set of chromosome would be also duplicated uh, in such a plant. So uh, if here in the first example gametes would be haploid, so here we have diploid organism and gametes, and gametes is a sex cell, and this can be, for example, in humans, egg cell and sperm, and uh, such cells would be haploid. So only uh, one set of chromosomes can be here. Of course, uh, each set wouldn't be uh, represented by only chromosomes from uh, father side or mother side, so this would be a mixture, and uh, this would be a random process. And here, with our second example, with tetraploid plant, we would have uh, in gametes uh, half the number of chromosomes. So if we have here uh, uh, four sets of chromosomes, so in the gametes we would see uh, two uh, sets of chromosomes. So this can be a uh, picture something like this or like this. So uh, just two sets, but how many different variants? And uh, as you see in our example, we have one plant whose genotype is capital T, capital T and small t, small t. So this is going to be genotype of one parent. And this parent can produce uh, three variants of the gametes. So the first variant would be uh, capital T, capital T. So the gametes would be uh, deployed. So uh, would have uh, two sets of chromosomes. And second variant would be capital T and small t. And the third variant would be small t, small t. So as you see, three variants are possible here. And parent number two, whose genotype is small t, small t, small t, and small t, only can produce one type of the gametes. And this is going to be small t, small t. So now we have to cross uh, all these uh, variants here with this variant here. So what is the outcome can be? We can build simple Punnett square. So on top we can list uh, these genotypes of the parent one and this is going to be capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, and small t, small t. And here on the side we can list the genotype of the second parent that is small t, small t, and now when we build a Punnett square we can see uh, what is the genotypes are possible for the progeny in a such a cross. So here we can have capital T, capital T, small t, small t, and here we would have capital T, small t, small t, small t, and here we would have small t, small t, small t, and small t. So as you see, we have three different genotypes uh, and two phenotypes. So this one phenotype would be uh, small or short, and uh, this two would be tall. Because according to our problem, assuming that uh, tall, capital T, is dominant, and that it only takes one copy 
of the dominant allele to give a dominant phenotype. Uh, what is the ratio of the progeny phenotypes you expect for this cross? And uh, as you see, we would have here uh, two uh, dominant alleles, and here we have one dominant allele. So these two uh, genotypes would make one phenotype, and here we would have uh, another phenotype. So this is going to be tall, and this is going to be small. So the ratio of the phenotypes would be 2 to 1. So per every two tall plants, we would have one short plant. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.